Welcome to Liesl's Artistic Studio. Today I'm going to show you how you can paint this pretty little watercolor scene and I'm going to teach you how to make your pine tree look like it is covered in snow. So let's get started and don't forget to like and subscribe. For supplies today we need watercolor paper, mine is cut to the size of 8 by 10. We also need a watercolor brush. This is a number 10 round brush but you could probably do this painting using just about any brush. Just make sure it has a nice fine point at the tip. And here is an optional item, I have a scrap piece of watercolor paper for testing some colors on. And of course we need watercolor paints. We'll get to do a little bit of color mixing today. So the main colors we'll be using are ultramarine blue. Payne's Gray, Burnt Sienna, and maybe a touch of Phthalo Green. I will put a list of all of these products, color names, brush sizes, etc. in the description of this tutorial if you're interested. Then I have a paper towel and some clean water, and we are ready to go. Let's get started by mixing a nice light blue for some of the background trees. So take some ultramarine blue and put it on a mixing tray, then mix in a little bit of Payne's Gray just to darken it to more of a navy color. Then if you want to, you can add just a touch of phthalo green and throw that in there. Now we do want this color to be very light in value, so mix some water with it to make it nice and light. And if you need to, test out your color on a scrap piece of paper just to see if it's how you like. Now take some of that light blue and start painting a couple of pine trees in the background. We are going to save the middle area for the snowy pine tree, so let's paint these trees off to the left and the right side. Start at the top of the tree and make some side to side motions off to each side, gradually making the branches bigger as you move downward. Keep in mind that this does not have to be a perfect or symmetrical tree. Keep it natural and organic looking by making some branches a little longer or shorter than others, having some branches more off to one side and not the other, or you could even have some spots where branches are even missing. Also, as a side note, if you ever feel like your paint is too dark or there's too much wet or color going on, just take your paper towel or a dry or damp brush and dab some of that extra color or water off. Alright, let's start on our focal point of this picture, our snowy pine tree. So first, let's mix our paint color. We're basically using the same navy blue that we had before, but this time we need it darker in value. So mixing ultramarine blue and Payne's Gray again, let's use more paint and less water to get a nice dark blue. Test it out on your scrap paper until you get it how you want. Let's also make a little spot here of just some Payne's Gray for some really dark areas on our tree. Now painting something white like snow with watercolors can be tricky because we can't just go back in and paint white on top of the other colors like you can with acrylic or oil paint. So the trick here is to think about the negative shapes and space that you will be painting around the white areas. So let's start by painting the top of the tree in a similar way to how we did the background trees. Then after you've gone down just a little ways, you're going to want to rinse your brush off and use what I like to call your dirty brush. In other words, it's mostly water, but still has just a trace of that color left in it. Then you're going to paint with water that next section of the tree. Then after it's been painted with water, take a bit of your dark blue and just touch the bottom and maybe even the side edges of that water area and the color will naturally start to blend or bleed upwards just a little bit. Now you don't want it to cover the entire area because after all we do want some of it to look white. We're just looking for the edges to be dark. So if it does start blending too far upward, take a paper towel and dab off some of that color. After your dark blue is sort of how you like it, take a touch of the Payne's Gray and dab it in just a few spots to make a few areas even darker. 
The use of contrasting values, especially these really dark colors, are the key here to making the snow lighter, whiter, and more realistic. Now just keep working downward on your tree using the same method over again. And I will say this may take a little bit of practice, so don't get frustrated if it doesn't work out for you the way you want the first time or even the second time. Don't be afraid to just try it again. Now when you're done with the tree and you get to the base, we're going to finish it off by connecting the tree to the ground. So take your dirty brush and paint some water along the base of the trees. And it's okay if it even touches a few of the lower branches and starts to blend a little bit. Then after your dirty water is painted at the base of the tree, take some dark blue and paint it right under the trees, allowing the paint to spread downward slightly. You can even add a little bit of black if you want. This is just going to help give the appearance of a shadow. Now, if you feel like your tree needs it, you can go back in and touch up or give a little more detail to some of the ends of the branches using the dark blue and or the black. Now that my main tree is done, I kind of feel like I want to go back in and add a couple more quick background trees to either side using some watered down blue. Once as all the paint is dry, you can finish your painting off by adding in some optional background branches using the Burnt Sienna mixed with a little Payne's Gray. These branches will be painted with the very tip of your brush so they will be thin and a little squiggly and these will be placed on either side of the main tree. If you want to do this but feel a little nervous about it, you can always get a pencil and draw on where you want your branches before you start to paint. Thank you. 
And here is your beautiful winter snowy tree scene. I hope you had some fun today and maybe even learned something new. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please consider subscribing to my channel so I can continue to help you discover your artistic side.